Okay, Ken, um, just uh, the Jaguars did a lot of pressure. Did they pressure maybe a little more than you were expecting? And why did you, didn't you handle it better? Um, no, I think obviously that uh, that's, they're, they're a team that gives you some different looks, whether it's, it's pressure, whether it's different zone looks, man looks. So, um, you know, they, they do a lot of mixing it up to try to keep, uh, keep offenses off balance. Um, you know, and I think that there was, uh, there were some situations where we, we execute well and, and operate our hots and, uh, times where we picked it up and, and took advantage of it. And then obviously there was times where we could have, we could have executed better. Um, you know, so I think it's just one of those things where we just got to kind of make sure we're, we're going about things the right way from a communication standpoint. Um, you know, make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, and then if, you know, we're wrong, we're wrong together. And, uh, and we, we know what our issues are. So, uh, I think some, some of those things that came up are, are things that we go back and we look at and, uh, and we just make sure that, that everybody's on the same page. And, uh, and when we are, um, then we, we generally have a, have a good opportunity on each play. Thank you. Hey, Ken, uh, in the years that uh, you, Josh, and Brian Dable all kind of worked together, um, what impact do you see that uh, Dable kind of had on Josh? And what what of it do you still kind of see today and in, in what, you, what you're dealing with, Josh? Well, I think just, you know, obviously building our system, uh, uh, building the foundation for, for what we do and uh, creating that comfort level with, with Josh within the system. You see um, day in and day out, you know, just the understanding, the comfort level, uh, you know, what, what we're doing that have been day one concepts for him, um, that, uh, that he's comfortable with. So I think, uh, I think that's something that, uh, obviously Dave's did a great job coming in here, um, putting together uh, a great system that, uh, that we've been able to, to build off of and, uh, and continue to grow throughout time. Um, and so, so I think that, that for one, and then two, just the, the mentality, the, um, just that, coming out, uh, you know, to, to do whatever it takes to, to win a football game. Uh, I think he really instilled that in Josh and, and Josh takes that to heart. And that's, that's really who Josh is, uh, you know, just giving his heart and soul um, each and every play, each and every game. Uh, and a lot of that is, was, was uh, Dave's personality as well. I know you've always wanted to make the, the offense kind of your own, but what kind of remnants still kind of exist from what you guys ran when Brian was here to what, to, uh, carry over into what you guys do today. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, he laid a great, great foundation for us. And, um, there's a, there's a lot of things that, uh, are still there. Uh, and then there's a lot of things that, that we've expanded within those things that might be, uh, day one things that, that Dave's had here. So I think it's been a really good blend of, uh, you know, obviously what, what Dave's did and, and then where, where we've kind of taken things and expanded things and, um, you know, and just tried to try to keep things, uh, as as you know uniformed as possible as comp uh, uh for for josh and and for the guys uh when we transitioned so um it's just been a, a good i think good uh opportunity to really kind of expand grow in some different areas and, and uh, uh continue to help us become as unpredictable as possible for defenses appreciate it ken mm -hmm. hey ken uh, aj fellman here in rochester uh, thanks for taking the time hey, uh, first off, um, Dalton Kincaid, five weeks into the season, where have you kind of seen his progression as the season's gone along and kind of uh, an update on his development as he goes forward? Yeah, I think uh, Dalton's really kind of grown in, into uh, you know a player that, uh, that we can definitely uh, move around, do some different things with, uh, you know, very good route runner, good feel for the game, you know, so I think uh, it's something that, uh, that we need to continue to grow. Uh, need to continue to make sure that uh, that uh, he's a he's a big part of this offense and, and continue to grow that. So um, I think it's something that uh, he's really kind of uh, um, got a great feel now um, building and just with every rep in a game, uh, whether it's a specific route or somebody else doing a route, you know, and him learning from that, uh, that that library will just continue to grow for him based off the looks that he's seeing. So um, you know, there's going to be times where, um, uh, you know, route might not be perfect, but, you know, he's just got that feel to, to kind of make it work. Um, you know, and so as, as he kind of builds that library of reps, 
it will just get better and better for him. And, and just the reaction time will be quicker and quicker based off of what he's seeing. So far among tight ends this year, he has one of the, the lowest uh, depths of targets uh, on the season. Do you see a reason why he's been more comfortable using him in the shorter and intermediate games? And do you see uh, expanding kind of his route tree as a, as a priority for him going forward? Yeah, no, I definitely think there's uh, there's room to, to grow that route tree and, and uh, get him more vertical on some things. Um, you know, we've tried a couple of times, uh, you know, just – it hasn't uh, hasn't worked out based on the defense or, or some some factors, but it's definitely something that that we can continue to grow and and uh, and improve on, just as a, a, from a system standpoint. All right, thanks for your time, Ken. Appreciate it. <laughs> sure. Hey, Ken. Um, you know, you talk about you know the, how much you've evolved this thing since Brian Dable left. I'm I'm curious as you continue your you know building you know, your rapport as a play caller with Josh, what's it been like for the two of you this year, trying to strike the balance between, you know, where he's been so successful in shotgun. And then when you have him line up in center and obviously the early season success you've had on play action, you know, are you happy with the balance that you struck particularly uh, in this last game? Yeah, I think, um, I think that balance is important. I think to be able to, uh, to be uh, uh, diverse in, in where you're putting the quarterback uh, is, is, uh, is an important step for us, uh, in protection and, and, uh, and, you know, creating a, a different, uh, looks for the defense. So I think that's something that, uh, is, is a, is a balance that we have to strike. Um, you know, at times it's, it's, um, you know, it's something that you gotta, you gotta work through, you know, because like you said, Josh has been so effective in the gun, doing some things in the gun and, uh, throughout his career. Um, you know, that it's, it's a definite balance that, that we have to have to strike to make sure that he feels comfortable in what we're doing. Um, and yet we're also, you know, doing what's best for, for him and the offense. So there, there's, there's a definite balance there, but at the same time, we want to make sure, you know, we're doing whatever we need to do in order for us to win football games. And, um, you know, uh, Josh's comfort level obviously is paramount in that. In a game, and this might be more like in the weeds question, and you don't have to go on and on about it and go into too much scheme stuff, but mm -hmm. do you feel like early in a game, like if he's having success under shotgun or under center, seeing it like multiple times where you guys are having successful plays, would you lean more into it over the course of the game? How much do you take feedback from him too with how the success of it under center is happening early in games? Well, you definitely, uh, I mean, I think you, you always want input and feedback from especially the quarterback position, um, you know, just to get a feel for, all right, what's, what's he feeling out on the field, you know, cause he's got, he's the guy who's got to pull the trigger. Um, you know, so I think that that feedback is important. And uh, you know, I think when you, when you are working from under center and, and there is successful plays um, yeah, there's going to be times where you want to get back to it, but you again, you got to kind of go back to striking that balance um, just to make sure you're not getting a uh, too uh, lopsided one side or the other. Thanks, Ken. Really appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Ken, Alex Braski, Batavia Daily News. Your running game had really gotten going early in the season, obviously a setback yesterday. What led to that from your perspective? Yeah, I think, you know, we just couldn't get in a rhythm. Obviously we had the, the three and outs, you know, early in the game and, um, when, when you can't, when you, when you're not extending the drives with first downs, um, you know, it creates that, that a little bit of a, you know, lopsidedness that you don't, you can't get in that flow. Um, you know, so I think that was, that was something that kind of came up last game that, um, you know, definitely hurt that, that rhythm of the offense of being able to, Hey, you know, run, pass, uh, play action, drop back, mix it up. Um, you know, so we just got to be able to find that rhythm a little bit earlier where, you know, we were able to find it at times, but just not consistently enough. And so, um, you know, I think that was, uh, that was an important thing for us to make sure, Hey, you know, let's make sure we're, we're staying on track, staying on schedule, uh, staying in a rhythm and, um, and make sure we're, we're doing those things so that we can remain multidimensional on offense. You were able to get Deontay Hardy involved on a couple of big plays, uh, I believe for the first time this year. Uh, especially that big one in the fourth quarter. What did you take away from those two plays that might allow you to to increase his involvement in the offense, particularly getting those chunk plays from him moving forward? Yeah, I think obviously he's a um, explosive player. He's a good route runner. 
um, you know, he could do a lot of good things for us. So um, getting a feel for him inside and outside, I think has been, been important as we went through training camp and everything and, and uh, um, making sure we're, we've got him in the right role. So that's something that I think we could continue to expand. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, a lot of guys on this, on this roster who could definitely help us. You know, when you talk about Deontay, when you talk about Trent, when you talk about Dalton and Dawson and, and obviously our running backs and James Cook and, um, you know, uh, Latavius and uh, these guys. So I think, you know, we've got to do a good job, you know, making sure that, that we're putting our guys in, in position to make plays and moving guys around um, so they're not locked into doing just one thing. Um, you know, but at the end of the day with, with one football, um, you know, it's, it's obviously hard to, for, uh, to create opportunities for the entire, the entire unit as much as you would like to. So we gotta, we gotta just make sure that, that, uh, we're staying balanced, uh, in how we're attacking teams and, and trying to get, uh, targets to, to guys as much as we can. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Coach Dorsey, Mookie Hawkins, Wolfo Sports 1080, welcome back. Thank you. Coach, um, second and one, you do a toss to James Cook. You're asking Gabe Davis to block a deep in at that situation. Why not use a tight end in that situation, Coach? Um, yeah, we had a uh, kind of a pin and pull scheme there to, to come down the end and try to get around and Obviously, the safety there did a good job shooting the gap and and bending and getting back on on James there when we were hoping to get outside. So I thought at the end of the day, you know, um, uh, Gabe did a good job of paying the end and and uh, making sure that guy you know couldn't uh, couldn't make the play. The safety who was blitzing inside there did a nice job of bending and getting around. Um, so you know, you look at all these things though uh, after the game and and say you know, hey, was that the 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 call on that? situation would I do that again and um kind of evaluate from there and, and make sure that uh that again that you're putting your guys in, in the right position uh not only uh personnel wise but just uh, uh philosophically in terms of the, the style of play called in, in those types of situations. Absolutely coach and um two point conversions you had two two opportunities there. How do you feel uh about the execution on those um two point conversions? Um I think we you know obviously I think you know, we did, uh, you know, we had an opportunity there. We had, we got, uh, you know, Khalil one-on-one space right there. The corner did a nice job falling off and making the play. So obviously at the end of the day, when, um, you know, when things don't work out the way you want to, uh, you, you go back and you look at it and, um, you know, I, uh, go back to the drawing board a little bit and make sure that, uh, um, you kind of come back the next time in, the, in a situation like that, that, uh, uh to give yourself a, a chance because, we liked the uh, we liked the play call and we felt good about going in. It was uh, it was something that we felt good about. Obviously, it didn't uh, didn't go our way that time, but um, you know I think it's something that we'll continue to look at and make sure we're we're uh, giving ourselves options. You know I think that's the that's the biggest thing in, in those scenarios is is giving Josh uh, the ability to work some different options and and not just locked into one uh, one guy. Yes, sir. One more, if I may, Coach. Uh, 40 passing attempts to 10 rushes. How did this team get back to being a little bit more balanced this week? Yeah, I think just uh, being able to extend some drives um, there and, and uh, you know, create some opportunities on uh, driving the football. And, uh, you know, those those couple three and outs early in the game, obviously, you know, kind of kind of hurt us right there. And then you get the end of the game. And uh, when you're down, you got to start throwing it a good amount. So then those numbers get skewed even more. So, it's one of those things we just gotta we gotta make sure we're we're being effective uh, first second down converting on third down extending drives, um, you know so that, that you can you can incorporate that that game and, and that balance and um, and do those types of things that that we've been good at in the first uh, first few games of the year. Thank you for your time, Coach. Good luck this week. Thanks. Hey, Coach. I just want to piggyback on what something Matt was talking about earlier and ask you about the play action and under center and. Is that something when you decide what the best balance is, is that more about what you do better or feel more comfortable in or what the defense and the opponent might dictate for you to do throughout the week when you prepare? I hope my, my question makes sense. No. Yeah. And I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, I think you're always looking at what the, uh, uh, the opponent is and, and kind of how could we get a best attack them. Um, you know, not only from a schematic passing game standpoint, but a protection standpoint, a run game standpoint. So, 
that's obviously a big factor. And then obviously when you go from there and you want to make sure that, uh, that your guys feel supremely confident in, in what you're running. So um, I think it's a, it's a balance between the two of, Hey, you know, what can we do to attack a defense and, and take advantage of, uh, of what, uh, what we're going to see, but at the same time, making sure our guys are, are comfortable with it from a, uh, from a, a operational standpoint, from a execution standpoint. And then Osiris, you know, he's played so terrific this year. Seemed like he struggled a little bit more than usual yesterday, but just my observation. But if you have a young player like that who might have that type of situation, what's the conversation from you to him after he's experienced so much success early on in his career in the first few games? I think it's it's everybody. You know, it's all, you know, not only Osiris, but a lot of our, our younger guys, you know, guys who are rookies, guys who are in their, you know, second year. You know, it's like, you know, it's early in, in, in your guys' career. You know, there's going to be these things that that we just got to continue to grow from and learn from. Um, you know, and I think that uh, that we've got a group of guys that you know is determined to uh, continually improve and get better, and um, that they're going to come back to work on Wednesday ready to roll. I thought today was good to get in, watch the film, um, and make these corrections, and so guys can see it and, and get the coaching that they need to get. So um, we can we got to continue to do that, coach coach our guys, make sure we're we're uh, um, correcting things and, and making sure that, that we're learning and growing from these, these experiences, whether it was good, bad, or, or indifferent. So um, Osiris, uh, you know, we came in, uh, did a great job in terms of being locked in in meetings. And, and I think he's going to grow from uh, not only this game, but, but all these experiences will just keep stacking for him.